going to try and play this perfectly. It's a good ball. Just so I can go Travella. Bang. Nice one. Uh, and he's quit. If you guys want coins for FC24, make sure you check out MMOEXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're very fast, they're very cheap, they're very reliable. And if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself a lovely 5% discount. What's up, guys? It's Ash. Welcome back to a brand new video. Hope you guys are doing great. Sorry if the video is a little bit later today. I got a bit carried away on X Defiant. You know, I think it's like the first day it's been out, and I've been really enjoying it. Uh, I had to wait like a couple hours to actually get onto the game because the servers weren't working. And then, you know, I finally got into a few games and I was having a blast and then realized I haven't recorded a video today. So, yeah, in today's video, guys, we do have some 442 custom tactics that we were using for, you know, like a bit of the weekend league. Um, and yeah, I want, also want to test out this Fakir card that we got for, you know, it was like a 13 win reward in the objectives or something. And also this Red Ramel. So we've got a bit to do today and I am going to be showcasing the 442 tactics and then obviously playing a game or two, depending on the time. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry if this intro has been a bit messy. I'm really bad at YouTube. And uh, yeah, let's get right into the video, guys. Alrighty then guys, so starting off with the tactics, not going to lie to you, going to be transparent guys, the tactics are fairly similar to pretty much always, uh, the reason being is because this game's very linear, very one dimensional, you know, there's, you know, very limited things that actually work in this game, you know, direct passing being one of them, so there's not going to be a crazy amount of variety when it comes to tactics, they're just, you know, things that work with the formation, things that work in the game, and I can't really do much about that, you know, I can't go randomly saying 70 width is fantastic, because it's not you know what i mean so yeah this is all i can do really and um yeah so for the defensive style guys we pop this on balance as it does give us the best control as i always say you know when you want to be aggressive and press you can when you want to drop off and be more passive you can also do that so balance is the way to go in my opinion if you want to use a pressure tactic because you prefer that that is absolutely fine go right ahead guys now, moving on to the defensive width, um, there is like a margin I would suggest, or what is the word, like a, a range, sorry. So I would suggest somewhere from like 40 to 50. The reason being is because it gives you a nice, narrow and compact defense, which will allow you to block out, you know, th those attacks through the middle, stop your opponent being able to run right through you, because that's very important. You know, if your defense is too wide, you're just going to be leaving a lot of space and you don't want that, especially through the middle. Now, the reason we don't go any lower than, let's say, 40 is because it's still important to you know maintain some width in the defensive shape you don't want to be too narrow because then you just leave too much space out wide so it's about finding that balance so you want to be narrow but not too narrow so i think 45 is the sweet spot but anywhere from 40 to 50 and you should be fine guys now for the depth this is kind of like a preference thing to be honest with you you can pretty much do whatever you want now what a lot of people do and what i sometimes do if the gameplay is horrendous is use 71 depth now the reason people do use this i'm sure a lot of you know and I'm sorry if you do, but the reason people use this is because you get this automatic pressure from the AI. They basically mark every player, they congest the middle of the pitch, and makes it very difficult for an opponent to play through the middle. If you're somebody that struggles a bit defensively, this is a good option because the AI helps you out a lot. If you're somebody like me that likes to have a bit more control over when they're defending, it's best to use something below 71, like 65 or 60, or even lower, you know, because you still maintain that higher defensive line, you just have a bit more control over when you press so you know if you like to manually defend uh, I wouldn't advise 71 depth so just pick a depth that you're comfortable with does not really matter guys moving on to the build-up play now one thing I would definitely suggest regardless of your play style in this game uh, is balance now the reason I suggest balance is because it's better than all these settings at that play style now this sounds ridiculous but for example if you want to play slow slow build-up sucks now the reason it's terrible is because your players just instead of you know moving Moving quickly they just don't move at all so basically the game just slows you down and that's their idea of slow build-up so this is terrible you know it's, it doesn't help you build up slowly at all it just makes you lose the ball then similarly with fast build-up guys your players just move all over the place and not in a good way so I would recommend balance because it's better than you know these other settings at everything now for the chance creation guys, this one is an absolute must in my opinion, I would recommend direct passing. Now the reason I recommend this is because it is by far the most meta option in the game. When you use direct passing guys, your attackers will make these runs and then the defenders will follow your attackers that are making the runs. Once that um, defender has overcommitted to the run that the attacker has made, the attacker will then do like a track back movement. So then they create that space between the defender and the attacker so that you can cut back or pass across to them, you know, aiding this cut back meta of the game which can be a little bit boring 
thing, but it is very effective and the only way to beat the AI consistently. Moving on to the attacking width, guys, there's no real specific number you need to use. All you need to know is if you want more narrow, go lower. If you want it to be wider, go higher. So I just picked 56. Again, no real reason as to why I picked this. I just like the flow of it. You know, I try out a few different numbers just to see if it makes a difference, but I just settled on this. Now for the players in the box, I'm using seven to get a few players into that penalty area without over committing everybody. Then the corners, I have them on two because sometimes I like to cross it, other times I don't, and I don't want to over commit. Then the free kicks, because I barely cross it, guys, I just have it on one uh, because I don't need players going into the box if I'm not going to cross the ball. So uh, yeah, moving on to the player instructions. Now for the player instructions, guys, these are fairly basic as well, but again, what works works in this game and you can't really change that you know so for the strikers we have them on stay central and get in behind guys now we have them on stay central because we don't really need them drifting out into the wider areas you know we've got that right mid the left mid sometimes the fullback so we don't need them in that space we want them to be in the middle so they can be relied upon and to aid this we also have them on the get in behind instruction which is very important because it ensures that these players actually move consistently if you have these players on mixed attack and your opponent is using a pressure tactic or 71 depth or something they're just going to not move at all and it's going to be very difficult so getting behind allows you to break that press uh, and actually create chances regardless of the situation now for the right mid and the left mid guys we pop them on these instructions I'm going to take a deep breath come back on defense cut inside getting behind and get into the box for cross now we have them on come back on defense just to ensure that they take up the correct defensive position when we don't have the ball if you have players that don't have the perfect work rates I think do to be fair you know these these left mids and right mids for me have high high work rates but for you guys if you don't um you know come back on defense will ensure that they actually fill in the position they're supposed to uh, and don't leave gaps cut inside's great because i really love this ai movement so they start their runs out wide and they make the transitional diagonal runs into the more narrow areas to get closer to the strikers leaving space for your fullbacks to overlap which we'll get on to so this is something i like we also have them on getting behind so obviously they do utilize their pace these players because they're left mid and right mid they're programmed a specific way you need them to be on getting behind to ensure that they're not static and actually move and then get into the box across guys so that they don't hesitate in getting into the penalty area because there's nothing worse than you know getting near the penalty area and there's no one there to finish off your chances now for the left center mid guys the more defensive minded midfielder i do suggest the balance by the way uh, i always suggest like a defensive minded player like a medium high work rate player to stay back and then a more box to box style player to, you know you know to give you that balance in the midfield so on this one the more defensive one stay back stay on the edge of the box across and cover center stay back obviously i just said we want him to stay back so we don't want him flying forward stay on the edge of the box across means if he does you know start wandering and going up the field he won't actually commit into the penalty area and then cover center so that he'll primarily cover the middle as we have the wide midfielders to cover the wings now for the right center mid guys like i said this is the box to box so on this player because we want them to do a bit of everything we kind of just leave them alone you know we don't restrict them we let them attack we let them defend and have that free roll and then we also pop them on cover center so that they will primarily cover the middle areas as opposed to the wings as we've just previously discussed now for the fullbacks guys whichever one is your most attacking one i get asked this a lot by the way they're like does it matter which fullback you send forward or if it's like the 4 3 2 one, which one of which one of your centre mids is the attacking? No, it doesn't. You know, if your left back is more attacking, then that's fine. If your right back's more attacking, that's fine. My right back's more attacking, so I have him on balanced attack and overlap. So the reason we do this is because we have this right mid and the left mid, like I said, on this cut inside instruction. So it means they're going to transition into those more narrow areas. When you have this right back or left back, like I said, on the overlap and balanced instruction, when this player moves into the narrow area, it's going to leave space for this player to overlap and then add that extra whip so you're going to have plays in the narrow areas and the wide areas making it very difficult for your opponent to defend your attacks this is very underrated and then for the other fullback guys the more defensive of the two have them on stay back and overlap so you always have at least three de uh, three defenders back at a time but when you send them on that run forward just like the other fullback they'll add that extra width for you the two center backs we leave them alone and the keeper we also leave them alone but yeah they're the tactics and instructions sorry for waffling guys let's go get into a game How's this for, oh, is he just giving me a win? Oh, bless you, sir. Please tell me I didn't miss that. Skip, skip, skip. I'm trying to skip. I didn't try and celebrate, I promise. And there we go. There's the win. That's it for the video. I'm joking. Let's go get into another game. I'll be able to tell you guys in approximately 30 seconds when I get the ball if this gameplay is horrendous. Uh, yeah, we're chalked. It's not, it's not the worst, but it's not great either. It just means we're going to have to rely on these R1 dribbles and, you know, thinking three seconds in advance. Because look at that touch. Horrendous. But we take the goal. There we go. Oh, you rat. Oh, my God. Oh, really? We're coming up against the back five. Are you serious, bro? 
come on now. Which means I'm going to have to switch you off the pitch then, doesn't it? God's sake. There's a combination I hate the most in this world, on this game even. It is uh, bad gameplay and a five pack. It's a really terrible combination to come up against. Can't tell if this Nabil Fakir is good or not. Uh, like I said, the gameplay is not great, so it's probably not the best time to judge him, but he's not shooting when I tell him to or anything. <laughs> Get the ball, man. Touch, finish. Thank you, Rolfo. Got to get there. Well done. Well, there we go. I actually tried to ball roll there, and the delay actually helped me out. It just completely ignored my command, but kind of worked. Oh, that was cold. Okay, okay. I'm starting to see it now. I'm starting to see it. This guy's pretty good. Oh. Chip. Aerial plus. That is DDA Drogba in a nutshell. <laughs> I'm going to try and play this perfectly. It's a good ball. Just so I can got Travella. Bang. Nice one. Uh, and he's quit. Alright guys, I am going to end it there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to drop it a thumbs up, sub to the channel if you are new, and don't forget to turn on notifications. And with all that aside guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out guys, take care.